Hello, my garden friends. Today I'm going to show you how to plant a bare root rose tree. Right now, around June, Jackson and Perkins usually has their sale on roses, which includes rose trees. They come bare root in the summer. So I'm showing you here what the root looks like and also what the crown looks like. There's some budding out, but otherwise it's still a very bare rose. I've been soaking it in this container here for at least 24 hours, actually 48. That helps swell the roots up. Um, and this is ultimately going to be the pot that I planted in. Um, it's about 24 inches across because this rose tree hopefully will live in this container for a long time. So now that the soaking is complete, I'm going to go ahead and dump out the water because it's going to be time to fill this container with soil. Now, drainage is going to be a key component of preparing this container. Uh, it was great for holding water when I wanted to soak the roots, but a growing rose doesn't want its roots soaked all the time. So what I'm showing you here at the bottom, and also what I'm kind of exploring, is whether or not just taking off that little rubber stopper there is going to make a drain hole for the pot. And it won't, because there's actually no connection between that hole and uh, the inside of the container. But those other one, two, three, four, five holes you see, um, those are the drill holes for the pot. It's, there's actually a little sign that shows you on the pot where you need to drill. So after much exploration, I finally found my drill set, which was critical to this thing. You're gonna need a drill bit that's a lot longer. Um, oh, pfft. You're also going to need to tighten it. Um, everybody's drills are different, but uh, this one I hadn't tightened down the key here to hold it. So first I explored drilling in the big hole, just because I was curious if that was going to work, but it doesn't. Fortunately, the little drill drains, you just push gently at the top of the screwdriver Sometimes it helps to get the drill going before you actually push down, just to give it some momentum. And so I'm just poking holes in all the drill holes at the bottom of this container. The reason being, again, roses don't like sitting in wet soil. They like water, but they don't want to be stewing in a soup. Uh, so since my pot's going to live outside, I am happy to put, put holes in the bottom of the container and let it drain into the backyard. So now just for aesthetics, I'm picking off some of the little plastic bits at the bottom. This could be important because those could flow back into the hole and block them up. And I don't want to have to dig up my beautiful rose tree to find that out. All right, next up, we're going to start filling the container with soil. Um, I'm using potting soil. And then also I like to buy this, this transplant stress relief, um, fertilizer that Jackson and Perkins sells. I get it with all of my roses and I filled up the container about a third of the way with potting soil and now I'm just adding some, not all, like half of the bag to create a nice layer of fertilizer. And I'm showing you there, there's still plenty of fertilizer left in the bag. And I'm betting that there is some uh, fish component to this fertilizer because my dogs Harley and Lucky found it fascinating. All right, now I'm bringing over the rose tree itself. I wanna be gentle with those roots. I don't wanna push it down hard because it might snap them. Um, but I also wanna to try to start getting my placement right. And by that, I mean, I don't want the tree to be tilting one way or the other. So that's why I'm holding on to it and gently trying to fill potting soil around the roots. Yeah, as you can see here, uh, Harley in particular thought this smelled, this fertilizer smelled amazing. So probably some fish, fish oil, <laughs> fish meal, always something to keep in mind when you have pets that they might find your fertilizer, if it's organic, especially fascinating. Um, but I'll just keep an eye on these girls like I always do. So I'm trying to spot here, you can see I'm, I'm poking at a particular root, trying to make sure all the roots get some coverage of soil. 
Um, and that can be tricky because that root ball that I showed you before, it spreads out pretty wide in, in all three dimensions. All right, here I am checking to see if I can stop holding on to the, the tree while I'm filling it with potting soil. And I'm walking all the way around to look to see, yeah, it was not quite at the right angle. If you only look at it from one angle, it can really fool you, as I learned with my first rose tree that I had to repot this year because it really had taken on not a 45 degree angle, but it was definitely leaning. So now I'm going through and adding a little bit more soil. And here I'm dropping the container gently on the patio to knock out any air bubbles, kind of let the soil dig into place. Again, inspecting the angle of the tree, trying to make sure it's as close to straight up and down as it can be. I don't mind if it's not perfect. I just don't want it to have a serious lean. Everything is looking good. So now I'm going to take the rest of my potting soil. Um, I like miracle Grow potting mix. I find that works really well for all my container planting. And I'm just shaking that all around the tree now that it's like the roots are covered so it's a little more stable. Don't have to hold the stem the whole time. And just distributing it evenly around. I'm still going to try to be really gentle because I don't... Well, you can see I'm pushing down on the soil to kind of press it into place and press out any air. I'm not putting my full weight into it because I don't want to break those roots. Um, that would be sad. <laughs> For the roots are the life of the plant. All right, this is looking good. You can see me again, kind of looking at it from a couple different angles. I've been burnt before. <laughs> uh, it's not the end of the world though. If your rose ends up being at an angle, tree ends up being at an angle, you can dig it up a little bit and repot it, uh, but I'd rather not. All right, so I've put down another layer of soil. Now I'm putting down the rest, the second half of the fertilizer, the diehard stress um, relieving fertilizer and then the rest of my potting mix as the final layer on this rose tree cake. You may be wondering why there's no audio today. Uh, this video <laughs> in Michigan this time of year, there's a lot of construction going on and it was pretty noisy in the yards around me. So I opted to just pantomime everything for you so that I could record audio like I am right now. but I don't blame anybody for wanting to get out in the garden and get things done. It just can get a little less than peaceful with all the power tools running. So yeah, at this point, just getting the remainder of the soil that I have onto the rose tree container. I wanna always leave, I don't wanna fill it all the way to the top of the container because when it rains, or when I want to water really heavily, it's nice to have the water stay in the pot instead of run off. Also, I'm being mindful that I don't want, I don't want the soil to go too far up the trunk of the tree um, because that could be, that could kind of rot the plant as well. Um, but I mainly am trying to make sure that the, the root, the roots are all covered and that the crown is, is stable. Okay, so here I just wanted to show you how much soil I used. Um, this is a 50 dry quart container of soil. I actually bought two, thinking I need to, but it's always pleasant to realize you have extra soil and you didn't need it then the other way around. All right, so now I'm just, again, pressing the soil down, gently checking all around the stem of the plant because if the soil's loose anywhere, that can cause it to tilt. If there's air pockets, that can prevent the roots from drawing up the nutrients they need. And I am trying to make it slightly inclined where the soil is a little bit higher around the stem so it'll run off to the sides of the container. And that's it. That is my lovely rose tree. Um, and just for comparison, my original rose tree that I bought, I think two years ago now, this is white licorice. Um, that's a 24 inch rose tree, but it arrived the same way um, as this new one did. Completely bare root. Um, I put it in a couple different locations in my yard trying to find a good spot that isn't too shady. So that's why the shape isn't, <laughs> isn't that great, but I'm working on it. 
Um, and yeah, for comparison, there's my new 36 inch tree rose, which is called Show Your Stripes. Um, so I'll give you some updates as we go. That's it. It's that easy. And before you know it, you'll have a beautiful rose tree of your own. If you like this video, please like and subscribe for more content on how to create a garden that you love. Bye.